I've always wanted to see what a necromancer based warlock build would look like in Destiny, and although there has been a ton of fanfic and fake information about upcoming classes being Seaver or Hive based, we never have come close to the idea of a unique and fun design for the game, until now at least. But thanks to the Witch Queen and Beyond Light, you too can become a necromancer, or better off, cosplay as one with the new Ostia, Struga, SMG Stasis and Narcotic Grip Exotics. It's not a full-on RPG necromancer with dark magic and such, but our gear is designed around spreading poison and slowing down anyone caught within our radius via stasis turrets. It's more like a lich, through and through, and although that might not sound exciting at first, trust me when I say that this build really is something worth investing in if you'd like to overwhelm everyone. But you know what else is overwhelming? This channel right here, so why not leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. First subclass will be using the Shade Binder and combining it with Freezing Effects with Necro and Ostia to create an overwhelming damage build that will cause a widespread chaos in the making. You first you want to have Glacier your Harvest aspect so you can collect shards created and build up your melee again so you can proc your Necrotic Crypts on those you are able to. This will also be combined with the Elemental Shards so we can turn shards into wells which will also play a big part down the line. Next, you will then want to have Bleed Watchers for access to status turrets, which will play a big part in how active we control an area and how often we can use them over and over again. With the two combined, we can create an interesting setup that allows us to create multiple turrets as long as we proc our firepower mod and add the energy to do so. However, we will need to also add in the effects of our fragments if we really want our abilities to shine. For fragments, we have the Whispers of Durance, which will extend our freeze capabilities of combatants. Whispers of Torment, which will give us grenade energy each time we get hit by a combatant. Whispers of Fissures for increased shatter damage. And Whispers of Rending for increased kinetic damage on status crystal or frozen combatants. The fragments combined with the aspects allows users to consistently prevent combatants from forming up and overwhelming us, while we can also do the same to them and generally slow them down and take out large group combatants in one go. This is the main idea and plan of action in terms of how the build plays out when combined with the following exotic and its effects. As long as we get a freeze, we can use this to stack the corruption effect from our exotic and produce huge damage in one go. It's also wise to know what key mods and stats will also play a big part in the build. We have around 19 discipline and 16 strength cooldown, and we want to make fully sure we are using our grenade as often as we can, while also having our melee available as backup if we need a quick shard or freeze. Next, we have Elemental Charge mod, which will allow us to become charged with light via Elemental Wells. Firepower times 2 mod which allows us to get back half our grenade energy as long as we are charged with light, well restoration for giving us back some energy to our lowest ability, and elemental shards which will turn shards into well which will then affect charge with light mod, etc. This should give you a good idea as to what you need to aim for when covering stats and mods as the key ones are the ones I have presented. As long as you have the following or similar then you will be able to replicate the gameplay as shown. For weapons you will want to aim for the following if you want the best of the build. Primary wise, you can get the Ostia Striga SMG with its catalyst, as the catalyst alone will make the weapon even more amazing to use in whatever content you are in. The weapon will allow you to build up poison damage over time from X amount of hits you do, or from killing them, and this can be amazing against bosses to mini bosses alike, as it will chew through their health until you need to reapply it again. I have found great success with this against the Lucan or Hive champions, as they tend to be swarmed by minor combatants. By applying the poison effect on said powerful hive, its effects will spread to others and cause wide scale destruction of the given force. On top of that, your magazine size will increase for each combatant kill by said poison, so you can do this for pretty much forever as long as your combatants are around. For secondary, I'm using the Deafening Whisper Grenade Launcher, and this will be used for taking out combatants in one go. Pairing this up with status is the best call for using this weapon, as it makes it easier for yourselves to net the given kill without the hassle involved. The only issue with said weapon type is that you can't aim and use them on odd angle platforms, so there's that to be aware of. You also can't use them in endgame content either, unless you have a team with the right anti-champion gear. I would recommend instead the Insidious Pulse Rifle if you haven't got one yet, as it's great to use in PvE endgame content and you can get the following roll to drop, which would be perfect for such builds. For Heavy, we have the Palomaya B Rocket Launcher with Impulse Amplifier and Lasting Impression. Another very powerful heavy that can do some great damage in one go. You can either get the roll to drop or you can craft one yourself, which I would recommend if you want a really good and handy rocket launcher on hand. Within your stats, you want to focus support on strength and discipline as mentioned before, 
and this can be easily done as long as you have good armor walls and the ideal mod shown. For us to get the most out of Stasis turrets, we will need to heavily rely on the firepower mod and creating as much shards as we possibly can since we don't have the demolition weapon to do so. That's why having what has shown will you do the best results from what I've been able to test. The Elemental Discharge mod will turn shards into wells for you, which will then trigger the Elemental Discharge mod and give us charge with light. From here, this will activate the firepower mod to which we can use whenever we are ready. This is also where your mini stat will also come in handy, as if we don't manage to get a turret down in time, we can use our mini to create some shards in the process and help speed this recovery up. For safety, I would also recommend you add on the Orbs of Restoration mod so you can get a bit of energy back to your lowest ability, Restoration Finisher mod which is the same as the Orbs of Restoration mod, and lastly the Distribution mod for an all ability cooldown. I will say that not everyone will have the Firepower mod, which is why I would recommend you try and get a secondary with the Demolitions perk to help you out, and then stack the Well of Restoration mod as that can come in handy since your grenade ability will be down the most. You can also add on the Bomber mod, but you'll lose access to the Elemental Shards mod unless you find a replacement spot. If you get that section covered, then you'll be golden from here on out. The rest of the stats now don't matter as much as they can be left how they are, or upgraded so they can still function in high in-game content. The only stat I would say can be left is your intellect stat as that won't have much effect in the grand scheme of things. Of course, this is down to you. Left over wise, we have Grenade Launcher and Refinder mod for our Grenade Launcher, Kinetic Siphon mod which allows us to create orbs of power via kinetic weapons, and Rocket Launcher Scavenger mod for increased rocket reserves. Now, as we have covered the mods, weapons, perks we are using, here's everything else compiled into one. For head, we have Mine of Resilience, Kinetic Siphon, Grenade Launcher, Ammo Finder, Element Charge mod, Arm, we have Discipline, a Firepower mod, Chest, we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, Concussive Dampener, Firepower mod, Leg, we have Discipline, Orbs of Restoration, Rocket Scavenger, and Well of Restoration mod, Bond, we have Strength, Distribution, Restorative Finisher, and Element of Shards mod. Similar to how many other Stasis Tilt builds are done, this one has a twist to it that I don't see many people using as much. The Osteo Azotic Effect is absolutely amazing at building up damage over time, but also making it hard for Cabanas to counter it. What many people don't tend to do is combine the frozen effects of Stasis and Osteo and create a literal landmine that will detonate on touch. Stasis in general is designed for slowing the gameplay down for combatants and making it easier for players to pick them off while Osteo and Narcotic are designed around preventing combatants from staying close and building up damage over time. AoE Poison and Stasis are two combos that are lethal no matter what game you play them in, as they are hard to counter, and as shown you can see how terrible it is to be facing us with it. The cooldown rate of grenades are pretty good paced, and the ability cooldown as well, and as long as we net some kills and produce the given item needed, we are pretty fair game from here. Even while Stasis is active, the exotic weapon at hand is very good at crowd control and can be a godsend when surrounded. I have tried this out in legendary content just to see how effective it is, and it works a treat if you are after something new and different for once. Like I said, its effects are great for taking out groups or mini bosses alone, as long as your primary is fully stocked to pull this off, and it doesn't feel like I'm at a disadvantage when using this setup compared to anything else in endgame. Great protection, with perfect ad clearing options. If you are ever after such a build and want to go easy mode on the game, then why not give this build a lucky try and see if it's designed specifically for you. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like on us up and also turn on your notifications so you never miss out on future content. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep updated with Destiny related content and news. Once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all next one.